wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to install Star Trek New Worlds on a modern operating system such as Windows 10 or Windows 7 or whatever. Um, so you can see I have it installed right here. It works, but I don't think OBS is going to capture it very well. So I'm just going to do it in a virtual machine. And I'm definitely not going to uh, get like Windows 10 or something in a virtual machine. So I just found a random XP virtual machine and I'm going to do it on there. It's basically the same thing. Just try to follow along. As you can see, Windows XP, Service Pack 3. So what you're going to need is a hex editor. XVI32 works well. Uh, Wine D3D. Uh, you'll be able to find that in a link below. And then you'll need the unofficial patch 1.1. That'll also be below. And you're also going to need an ISO file, which I'll probably provide because this game is abandoned where you can't find this anywhere online to buy. So might as well just link it. Um, on your on your system, you'll need something called Power ISO. Uh, it's a free program. Uh, you'll be able to uh, mount the ISO file that you download. You'll be able to do it by pressing this button that says mount and then select a drive. You should have like two or something. If you don't, set the number of drives to like one or two. So on this menu, just press mount image and then find the mm -hmm. ISO file. Just double click that, it'll mount it. You'll be able to find it under this PC. And then right here, CD drive, I mounted it to Q and it just says new worlds. Um, so let me go to my Windows XP. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using VirtualBox. I'll be able to mount it through optical drives and then mount it with this button right here. So just go to my computer. You'll see something like this or what I showed before. Just double click on that. It'll start the installation of New Worlds. You'll hear the music and stuff. Click next. You can change the destination folder. I'm going to do that. Install it to my T drive because I do not have enough space on my virtual C drive. Click next. It's going to install. It's a very small game. Probably it was big at the time. Um, when I click press forfeit, it's going to uh, play a cinematic. I'm probably going to skip through that in post process. Uh, it's a minute long. It's kind of obnoxious. All right, so that was the promotion for Interplay's new game. By new, I mean 2000 new. Um, right now, it's going to... Click cancel. All right. Um, you want to press no for that. All right. So the installation part is done. Now we need to patch it. We're going to run the unofficial patch. Uh, press accept, install, make sure that directory was right. I accidentally clicked that twice, but that was the right directory. Now you want to open up the archive win D3D. We're going to need three files from that. DD draw, libwine, and lib uh, D or wine D3D. Just copy those to the desktop for now. We can close out that archive. Uh, now we want to go to where we installed the the game, which is right there for me. Now we want to drag and drop these files. Um. You can delete these off your desktop now. And now you want to rename this file, ddraw.dll. Change the W to a 2. Alright, now you want to go to where it says Star Trek New Worlds or STNW. Open up your hex editor by just double clicking on it. Uh, now you want to drag the executable right onto there. And here's the hexadecimal equivalent of this application. It's pretty big. Uh, we're gonna have to change like one thing from it. 
so we're not going to sift through that entire thing. We're going to use the search, find, and you're going to want to select text string. Type this exactly, d d d r a w dot d l l l. Uh, uncheck case sensitive, press OK. On this line right here, on the ASCII equivalent of these hexadecimal values, go to the first D and you'll be able to see the D D R A W dot D L L. You want to change the W to a two. And that's it. <laughs> Press save and you can exit out. And now you can run it. So play Star Trek New Worlds. Uh, keep in mind, it's going to scale the resolution up. So on my virtual machine, the virtual display is just going to shrink. But if you're playing it on your, uh, if you're playing it like without VirtualBox, it's going to stretch your entire screen. In order to skip these, press Escape. There's two of them. Um, You'll hear this music. Uh, if you hear this music, then that means you successfully patched it, and it's working in all. Um, if you don't, you might need to run the patch again. So as you can see right here, we can start a single player campaign, but before I do that, we want to go to options, and it's recommended to change the screen size to this, the biggest amount. It's not going to change it right away, but when you get into game, it'll just enlarge it slightly. Um, also, I'd like to talk about multiplayer. Multiplayer does work. I was able to confirm this uh, by uh, running a two-player game between my computer and my brother's MacBook, running Windows as well, and it worked fine. Um, you'll just have to use um, inter internet TCP IP connection for direct play. Uh, one person has to choose an alliance, then create. Um, then they have to be on the same network, uh, obviously, and then one player clicks join. Uh, do not, when it says that, unblock it. And it's going to be searching for sessions, and then the person who's hosting, it'll say their computer number, click that, join, and everything will work fine. Um, so to single player campaign, um, if you click on tutorial, you'll be able to play those. Um, on VirtualBox, unfortunately, it's not built to be like a game. It's not built to run games. So right now it's going to be super laggy for me. But if I were to play it like on my OS, like Windows 10, it runs totally fine. However, I think there is an FPS cap of 30. I don't know. I can't confirm that. I have a quite a powerful computer. I don't know why it would be at 30. Uh, most likely it is a frame cap rate or something like that. I don't know. Uh, in order to play, um, it'll show your objectives when you're on this screen. Just click next to go through all the details of your mission. And then when you pr uh, press mission, it'll get you into the game. It's going to take a while because it's virtual box. It's super laggy. Uh, there you go, it works. Uh, VirtualBox is going to be very slow. Let me reiterate that again. I'm going to try to exit out of the game. God, that is painful. Alright, um, it crashes when you uh, exit, but that shouldn't be a problem. Press don't send, everything's completely okay now. And that's it, you got Star Trek New Worlds on your computer. Uh, I'd like to give th credit to a forum post right here. Um, that's how I found it. Um, yeah, uh, credits to this guy, freaking genius. <laughs> oh, uh, one more thing, uh, if you want to progress like throughout, like there's a campaign mode for each uh, race. There's the Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans. If you want to progress further without actually playing them, if you go to your config file, um, 
if I can find it. Game, if you go to this, uh, you can see you got Federation, Klingon, Romulan, Tau, Mets, Hub. If you just start adding zeros to these, just two zeros, it'll unlock everything in the game. And there you go. Everything works. You should be able to play that with your friends, up to three players, and everything will be okay.